The Nightingale is the follow-up film from Jennifer Kent, writer and director of The Babadook. She writes and directs this film. Uh, this movie is a harrowing, stark, grim, gritty, like, experience. This movie is not for the faint of heart. I don't mean that in a good way. I mean that in a wears you down with brutality and gruesomeness like over and over this movie is unrelenting in its tone and um it's relevant and well acted but the movie is not for like the average viewer let's get into the story uh the nightingale is about claire she is an irish convict living in tasmania um in 1825 and she's already like um completed her sentence but her um She's being, like, taken advantage of by Lieutenant Hawkins, played by Sam Kaplan. He is sort of, you know, he rapes her once in a while. And he makes her sing for the men. And she has a kid and a husband who's also a convict. And they're at the mercy of the soldiers. They're, they're basically in control of all these uh, colonies that are utilize the prisoners. So... The prisoners are at the complete and utter mercy of the soldiers. So after an altercation with the husband wanting the letter of recommendation for them to finally leave this sort of small colony, they get in a fight and Hawkins does something terrible to her, uh, resulting in him deciding to skip town and go to another township far away in order to go for a sought-off promotion, leaving Claire alone. So Claire decides to go and hunt him down for some vigilante justice, however, She's, you know, has no skills. She's, you know, just a woman living in the middle of the wilderness. So she has to team up with Billy. He is a uh, Aboriginal, um, very racist, does not like the white man. So they don't get along, but she's paying him. So the, the two of them, they make an odd couple. They decide to go after um, Hawkins. So this movie, when I, it is brutal. There are multiple rape scenes against the main character and it will make you uncomfortable and it sort of you know hammers in the tone of like they're living in the middle of the wilderness you know it's whoever has the guns whoever has the force whoever has the power is in power you know there's some people are just completely and totally at the mercy of other people you know and same goes for when she starts traveling with uh, billy alone whenever she bumps into someone they always comment you know a woman shouldn't be riding alone like this. You know, since it takes place in the 1800s, a lot of people, you know, think it's improper for her to be traveling alone or they think that they can take advantage of her. So she's constantly, like, being, you know, attacked and, like, sought after by, you know, just random people, like, either working on camps or something or just travelers. Literally anyone and everyone attacks anyone else in this movie. So it adds a sort of, like, raw Western kind of vibe to it. And um, the acting's phenomenal. Sam Claflin, I didn't even recognize him because, you know, he's usually a pretty boy. He is just a despicable piece of shit in this movie. And I'm glad he chose to do this type of role. You know, he usually plays the sort of, you know, handsome-faced, sort of, you know, charming, you know, Mr. Darcy kind of, like, guy. This movie is just a monster. But uh, he doesn't view himself as a monster. And he just, this is the way he is. And um, just a phenomenal performance. Almost steals the movie away from the main girl and Billy. Billy also does a really good job. Those two have a lot of the girl and uh, Billy have a lot of um, chemistry because they don't like each other and he keeps disappearing on her whenever she gets into altercations. And finally she blows up at him. She's like, how come you're never here to help me? You're supposed to protect me. And he looks at her and goes, I'm not here to protect you. If they see me, they'll shoot me in the head. You know, like then I can't show you the way. So then when he finds out she's Irish, though, they sort of bond a little and over the time they become friends. And it's a really, that's sort of the backbone and theme of the story. However, there's this, you know, sort of creepy atmosphere that Jennifer Kent did the Babadook before this movie. So she sort of lends a little bit of horror scenarios in some dream sequences that are very nightmarish and atmospheric. Didn't really quite love those, but it's, you know, a great way to sort of... Um, show her grief and guilt and, you know, her despair, you know, personify it in a certain way rather than just have her, you know, wake up and go, oh, you know, from a dream sequence or a nightmare. And uh, the movie's a little bit long. It's almost uh, two and a half hours long. And the third act is a little bit on the realistic side, which I didn't really dig. But overall, this movie is a harrowing, stark, grim, realistic look at just the wilderness. You know, it reminded me of other brutal films where people take advantage of other people like The Homesman or Lady Macbeth 
And um, this movie definitely is not enjoyable. It's not one of those, uh, it's not, it can be considered a rape and revenge film of sorts, but it doesn't revel in the violence. In fact, it, it, ma it almost makes you like kind of want it. And then when you get it, you realize, ew, you know, I didn't want this. Like, she's literally like doing that to that guy. And like, it's a, t a type of movie that, you know, shows the, the rawness of violence and revenge. And, you know, there are parts that sh she's very vulnerable in the movie. Great performance. Um, definitely not recommended for people who can't stomach that sort of subject matter. But uh, The Nightingale is definitely an experience if, if you're willing to, you know, subject yourself to it. It feels really gruesome, but um, definitely one of the more, you know, emotionally charged drama thrillers that I've seen ever. So uh, I give The Nightingale a six and a half out of ten.